Gordon, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Okay, give me your reaction to the governor's condition, conditional veto. It came in the 11th hour, right? Yes, it did. It came on the last day possible. Uh, the governor has posed this as a balanced approach, that it represents the interests of business and the interests of the low-wage workers. In fact, when you look at the consequences of the, of the veto, were it to be accepted by the legislature, uh, it really is not going to help people who are working for $7.25 an hour to have to wait for three years before they see the full effect of a $1 raise. So it, uh, it means that people who enjoyed a, an increase, if you will, back in 2005, it went to $7.15, and then in 2000. Nine, it went $7.25. They're basically working for about $6 an hour now in terms of what they can purchase with that minimum wage. And going forward, a quarter an hour increase doesn't affect very many people, first of all. You have a lot of low-wage workers, but you have probably uh, 50 or 60,000 who are working for just the seven and a quarter. By the time uh, they get that and uh, go through the year, they're... The consequences of the payroll tax increasing this year and of inflation means they're right where they started. Well, you bring up very good points, but I'm sure you've heard reaction from business leaders. They call the governor's plan a reasonable compromise. The, you know, the argument on their side is, um, you know, a lot of small businesses can't afford this and it could lead to layoffs. Well. This has the, been the, always has been the story. No business is ever argued in favor of having their costs increase. Uh, first of all, it's interesting that the minimum wage is paid primarily by large corporations, not small businesses. It's always the small business is brought out as the heroic pr producer of new jobs, and they do produce the new jobs, but they tend not to be the employers of people working at the minimum wage. About 60% of uh, employees at the minimum wage are employed by large corporations, not small businesses. Secondly, the, uh, the fact is that they, they need to recognize that people cannot survive at $7.25 an hour in New Jersey. They can't survive at $8.50, which is what the legislature asked it to go to. But it would represent a, cons a noticeable bump in their take-home pay, and that is money that would be spent immediately and locally. Th those are not people who are traveling to the Bahamas on vacation. They're not people who are putting it away in savings. Th these are people who are spending the money on the necessities of life, and that would give a jolt to the economy in a way that this 25 cent increase will be not noticed by the economy. Well. Do you think politics is, in, is at play here? Do you think the Democrats are trying to attack the governor during a, well, politics an election is, year? Politics mm. is always at play. But if you think about it, in, theoretically, both the governor and the legislature have agreed that the minimum wage needs to go up. They both agreed that it should be at least $8.25. Uh, so to that extent, there is agreement. Uh, but the question is, how do you get there, and do you get there in time so that it's of real help to the people who are barely surviving at that minimum wage? And I think the answer is, with the governor's approach, that, that the, the uh, results will be insignificant for the workers. Uh, business should be happy because their costs are only going to go up by 3% for people that they're paying $7.25 to. So if you figure it out, if inflation's 3% and they're getting a 3% raise, that really doesn't uh, do very much. And it helps a very small number of the low-wage workers in New Jersey. Hmm. I, I think, again, uh, the business community feels a little bit different about it, though. I, here's a, uh, this is from the president of the Retail Merchants Association, John Hullab. He says, the governor clearly understands a 17% wage hike with ongoing annual adjustments would have a serious negative effect on New Jersey employers. That's what you expect business to say. And they're, by the way, this has been looked at, and the evidence is leaning very heavily to the view that an increase in the min minimum wage does not reduce employment. In fact, the, the best study is, uh, was, it was done in New Jersey in the 1990s when New Jersey increased its minimum wage. Pennsylvania did not. 
They looked at all the workers in fast food restaurants who were working for the minimum wage. In fact, jobs increased in New Jersey. They didn't increase in Pennsylvania. Well, I have to ask you very quickly in 10 seconds or less, do you support the Democratic plan for a constitutional amendment? Well, I'm sorry that it's going to be a constitutional amendment if they put it on the ballot. I think that, uh, and the fact that it would adjust the minimum wage for inflation, I would be inclined to support it. Okay. Gordon McInnes, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Desiree.